They said there be snow at Christmas. Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. 2020. It was the worst of years and it was the worst of years. But now it's on the way out with all the other things that made 2020 the worst year on record. And even though there is a mountain of hardship and heartache to climb in 2021, the future is looking up. To quote Paul McCartney, And to quote John Lennon, So with those sentiments in mind, I want to share with you my worst fountain pen experiences of 2020. This is 2020. <laughs> and let me make a couple of points right here and now, dear viewer. If you love the pen I'm either panning or making fun of or in any way ridiculing, please feel free to give me a thumbs down. It only tells the YouTube algorithm that I'm popular. But please refrain from rude or obnoxious comments as they will just be hidden and you will be blocked and shrouded for eternity. You see this? This is a shroud, Mr. Holland. A shroud for the dead. Late, Mr. Hart. You won't know you've been blocked and shrouded, of course, and your hateful comments will never be seen, but they will add to my channel's popularity. So, thanks. The second point is that these are my experiences. So some of these pens might be great for you, but the experience was disappointing for me. There is one pen on my list that I know made some reviewers best of 2020 lists, but as all writing experiences are ultimately subjective, one person's grail pen is another person's overpriced loser. The good news is that out of the 90 some odd pens I reviewed this year, I couldn't find a full 10 for my list. I only found seven. And they're not all stinkers either. Well, one is actually a stinker. But some of these pens were just disappointing to me because I was expecting better. So let's take a look at some of my worst pen experiences of 2020 and see if my hate mail surpasses 2019 right now. <laughs> So here we go. I've ranked my list of worst pen experiences from the least offensive to totally offensive, and I'll be cutting in some video from the reviews I made at the time. For maximum effect and the building of suspense, I will go from least worst pen experience to the most worst pen experience. My grammar teacher is rolling in her grave right now, I bet, <laughs> and she's not even dead yet. I'm not Nothing is, you know, I'm not dead. Yeah. He says he's not dead. Yes, he is. I'm not. I don't want to go on the car. Oh, don't be such a baby. I feel happy. Oh, thanks very much. There are seven spots. And at number seven, the winner for the least offensive of my worst pen experiences of 2020 is, man, this is hard to say, but it's a pen BBS. And it's even harder for me to name the model because it is one of PenBBS lovers' favorite pens. The PenBBS 492 Year of the Rat. Now, before you toss me out of the Taste the Rainbow PenBBS Facebook Club, let me explain. As I said earlier, these are my experiences, and some were bad because I had high expectations and anticipation, and I was ultimately disappointed. The hype for this pen was huge. This was a cool new, well, old new design with a magnetic filling system, so the technical nerd in me was very excited. Plus, this was a numbered, limited edition, and with all the anticipation and the convoluted process of ordering it through Taobao, in the end, the pen has been disappointing. The box was very impressive and heavy with the added ink bottle that you got, which is uh, quite lovely. The little rat on the top. Uh, but the weight added another oh, 20 bucks or so to the shipping cost. Um, and I ended up paying nearly $130 Canadian for this pen. 
It was way more than I expected because of the added brokerage fee from Taobao as well. I was excited to have the pen work. Uh, in the end, it just doesn't. I've fiddled with this pen more than any pen in my collection and I've given up on it now. This piston just sticks all the time. Yes, the pen writes nicely and it fits in the hand beautifully. Uh, unposted, of course, because even though the cap goes on there, it's way too long to write with and back weighted with that magnet in the back. But to use this pen, I have to eyedropper it, which defeats the whole purpose of the magnet now, doesn't it? So this has probably been the biggest disappointment of the year for me, but I should lump this pen in with it. This is the Pen BBS 487. This gorgeous Galaxy 487 is the production version of the 492. I really thought that Pen BBS would refine this 492 and provide a production model with all the bugs worked out so the magnetic filler actually worked. It doesn't. So another expensive eyedropper and another disappointment. The disappointment here is that the uh, geek tech kind of gimmicky filling system is just not worth uh, the the price of the pan I don't think so instead of making them seven and eight on my list I just lumped them together as number seven they are essentially the same pen and number six on my list of disappointments is okay don't shoot me another pen BBS pen can you believe it The caveat on this one is that it was announced as a prototype by Long in the advertising and didn't even carry the Pen BBS name. This is Long's Pen BBS or Long's uh, 100. It is a Pen BBS 100. It is a hooded 14 karat gold nib modeled after the famous Hero 100 pen, which of course is a knockoff of the Barker 51. Again. This was also not cheap, and even though it was sold with a warning not to expect the same quality build as a typical Pen BBS pen, the result was, yeah, disappointing. There's no point in having a 14 karat gold nib if it writes like a nail with no character at all. To be fair, the Parker 51 uh, have uh, on loan a Parker 51 from 1954, and it's a 14 karat gold nib, very much like this one. And it writes like a nail with no character either. But your first 14 karat gold nib uh, for a pen BBS, and it has to be this style of pen. I just really don't get it. Plus, it, the pen is not very good looking, I don't think, um, as a demonstrator. Uh, especially when the ink collector, it's not blue by the way, it's white. But I could not get, this is a, a Roshizuku ink I could not get the staining out the other disappointment about it was that this hood does not come off just like the hero 100 there's a whole involved process of getting that off of there but in addition the body having this clear demonstrator with that little agitator in this fairly cheap converter I know demonstrators are demonstrating the pen but I'd rather demonstrate a filling system rather than a cheap converter so it's not very good looking, either posted or unposted, or capped for that matter. So this pen misses on all counts for me. Prototype or no prototype. And number five on my worst pen experiences list is this limited edition black and rose gold Conklin Duraflex slash Duragraph. I ordered this pen with two nibs. The black nib on the pen it's a medium and I ordered an extra black Duraflex nib it isn't just my flex writing that ended up being a disappointment which it is this pen was disappointing all around the look and feel of this pen is actually great the pen is satiny smooth uh, in fact so much time has passed since I used this pen with the original nib in preparation for this video I put the original uh, black medium nib back on the pen as I had replaced it with a rose gold steel Natami nib and I decided to ink it up and try it again 
I thought that perhaps the nib could be saved like I did with my Picasso 915. But after just five minutes of writing with this pen, it all came back. The nib is awful. And whether it's the nib or the feed or the combination of the two, the pen goes from being extra fine to gushing blobs of ink all over the place. This pen cost $88 US with shipping from Goulet, which is around $115 in my Canadian funny money. And at that price, this is disappointing. It did come in a nice box though, you have to admit, a very nice box. This pen stays in my collection as a size comparison and as a great example of a US made clone of a Parker. <laughs> okay, now we're past the disappointing experience part of my list and into the this really pissed me off part of the list. What a pisser. Number four on the list is this Moon Man or Jinhao, or generic, uh, yeah, okay, we'll call it a pen. I bought it when it was labeled a Moon Man, but it didn't have a model number. While I was waiting for it to arrive, the Easy Buy Etsy seller changed the listing to Jinhao with no model number. After I received this melted and twisted, can you see that? How it's all warped and distorted and melted? After I received this melted, twisted sack of monkey shit. Cheap, lying, no good, rotten, four flushing, low life, snake licking, dirt eating, inbred, overstuffed, ignorant, blood sucking, dog kissing, brainless, dickless, hopeless, heartless, fat ass, bug eyed, stiff legged, spotty lip, worm headed sack of monkey shit he is. I wrote to Easy Buy and told her this was no moon man, nor was it a Jin Hao and she very quickly refunded my money for the pen and which is very nice thank you very much and then changed the name on the listing to this it is still for sale for 21 dollars us and at that it is a ripoff this pen isn't worth five bucks it's thin poorly made cheap resin with a generic number five nib i know a lot of people get upset about chinese clones of major manufacturers but when it is a cheap, and I don't mean inexpensive, I mean cheap, with a capital EEP, piece of crap at inflated prices, that's when I get pissed off. Is that you putting your foot down? It is, actually. Don't get impressive when you're angry. <laughs> if you see this listing for this pen, and it comes in a number of different colors, you can see here, uh, avoid it. Avoid, avoid, avoid. I didn't even ink this pen up. It's so awful. Now we are getting into pens that made me feel slightly ill when I got them. Not because the pens made me sick. Well, well, with one exception. But that the moment they arrived and you get them in your hand, you say to yourself, you know, in my case, out loud, oh no. No, 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 no. No, by Consuela. Product formerly known as Lemon Pledge. I feel like a fool. I'm going to give you an example of this kind of purchase. I'm sure you've all done this at least once in your lives. I saw this keyboard in an online ad. It was in the shape and form of an old typewriter and even had the roller and carriage return bar but it's Bluetooth and the roller carriage is the place where you can put your tablet my wife is a writer and always talks about writing with her old typewriter so I got one of these for her for Christmas and this is what showed up is it wireless no nope. uh, does it have a carriage return bar no. Does it have a tablet stand anywhere on it? Nope. Was I ripped off? Yep. I'm trying to get my $50, you believe that? $50 back uh, through PayPal for this piece of crap. Hey, that's not worth five bucks. These next two pens are in this category. I didn't lose a lot of money, but I feel cheated and used and that's where the sick feeling in the pit of your stomach comes in. This 
is the Keiko Acanthus. When I opened this pen, I thought, meh, it's a Chinese cheap plastic pen. Oh well, it looked interesting because of the William Morris Acanthus leaves print on it. And it was so long getting to me from China that I had assumed I'd paid oh five dollars for it or something like that. But then I looked at the invoice and the pit of my stomach started churning. I paid fifteen dollars US for this, which is like twenty dollars Canadian. This pen is so poorly made and with cheap plastic materials that it belongs in the bargain basket by the checkout for a buck with all the other dollar pens that have American flags or I love New York painted on them. Even this image of the acanthus wallpaper is so re low resolution that you have to look at it from about 10 feet away or you'll see those halftone dots and that lovely scene down the middle of it. This is an awful, horrible pen and the nib is awful and horrible as well. And of course it's an extra fine too. And what could be worse than this? Well, just wait for it. Wait for it! <laughs> because here it is. It is a one thing to be ripped off by a pen company known for making crappy pens, like this Keiko Edge, made from genuine Crackalon. Trademark. But it's another thing to be ripped off by a mainstream name in fountain pens, Monteverdi and sold by a reputable pen retailer, Goulet. This is the Monza 3 Calligraphy Bonus Set. It comes with not one, not two, but count them, three sets of nibs, sections, and converters. And not just any nibs, mind you kiddies. You have your choice of fine, medium, and this very cool flexi nib. Hone your Spencerian script skills with this flexi nib, and wait, that's not all. If you act right now, you will receive a free bottle of Monteverdi ink. Special this week, 17-inch TV, $17. 19-inch, $19. We got acres of TVs, the biggest video warehouse in the world. Crazy highs, 4650 lands down near pay. All for the jaw-droppingly low price of only $24 US. Call now. Operators are standing by to take your money. And shipping to Canada is only another $20 US. After 6 p.m., 942-4047. What a bargain. Not. All three nibs are crap. The fine and the medium are more like extra fine and Singer sewing machine fine. And the flex nib should be renamed Bowflex nib, as it takes Jack LaLanne to get it to flex. And now, here is the man who will show you how to feel better, look better, Jack LaLanne. Four, up, down, and rest. That's it. And then it shreds your paper faster than the outgoing administration. I had all the evidence. It was destroyed. I don't know who destroyed it. I think Gordon did a lot of shredding. Hard evidence. Well, I can't say that it would positively prove that they planned the break-in, but it would come pretty close. The pen itself is not worth five bucks. It's so poorly made of cheap injection molded plastic all made in China with a US brand name it is better just to buy the Jin Hao version of this which this is I can't remember the number right now I'll put it up on the screen here but Goulet should put a warning label rather than flash it as a wonderful sale opportunity oh but the ink is actually very nice here is my sign off from the review Many of you click away before I'm finished signing off, but this one you should see because I vented my anger at this pen. Thank you for watching. And that's all she scratched. And now, for the number one worst pen experience for me in 2020. Drum roll, please. Drum roll. Oh. Oh, uh, this item ticked off all of my boxes for pissing me off. You're goofy. Don't piss me off, Art. Let's look at my ticked off boxes, shall we? Do we have rude and insulting customer service? Check. We have a pen that was overpriced for the quality of workmanship and materials? Check. 
We have a pen that failed to write properly out of the box. Check. We have a pen that not only failed to write, but gushed all of its ink onto your body by merely closing the barrel. Check. We have a pen that not only performed badly, but smelled so bad that you had to use scented ink. Check. Smelly cat, smelly cat, what are they feeding you? Everybody! And what might that pen be, Doug? I'm glad you asked, because this is my number one stinker of the year. It is the Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya version 2. I can't show you this pen because after much back and forth with the owner of FPR, I returned the pen to him for a partial, partial refund. But I can show you a compilation of my week of fun with a stinky, leaky, crappy pen. That's an SLC. Stinky, leaky, crappy. And uh, take a look at this pen. Okay, I have to document this. I've been fighting with this pen for the last couple of days. As you can see, I'm having some inky experiments. Well, here's another nice mess you've gotten me into. Well, I could do that. You told me I was your new friend. Uh, filling it up with KWZ, and I did that because this converter smelled so bad. There was some kind of a grease they put in here that just stinks to high heaven. Ooh. put the barrel back on and when I got to the barrel being almost completely on it shot ink up out through the nib all over my hands that was yesterday so I put the barrel back on and when I got it to about here it started shooting ink there you can see it but if you notice I'm screwing the barrel up I'm gonna do it slowly because I get ink on myself every single time. Doing it slowly. See that? It's burping. You are about to witness the eruption of the famous geyser Old Faithful. See it's burping up and down? So I keep turning this. If I turn it too fast, of course I just turned it right in and it just gushed all over me. Now I like being gushed on as much as the next guy, but not when it's ink like this. So when I try to slowly turn this up, somehow there's air pressure, there it is, air pressure going up into that feed and pushing ink out. When I did this before, yeah, I didn't get any ink. I'm getting ink this time. It's very, very wet. Uh, and I knew it was gonna be wet even before I inked it up. I'm going to get rid of some of that ink. I don't know whether you can see that white through that nib. Way too much of a gap as far as I'm concerned. Okay, one more thing. I'm going to open this up to show you what happens inside the barrel after I've shoved all that ink up there. It's still spitting out. This is now all covered in ink. See that? All the way down to there. I have a lot of dislikes about this pen. The converter and the feed combination are the biggest problem with this pen. The converter smells of some kind of putrid grease or oil, and uh, the barrel is able to push ink out of the nib when you're screwing it shut. The nib is also way too wet. There, it's gushing again. The pen is clearly not usable out of the box, with $12 US shipping for a total of $47 US. I was going to give FPR a try again, actually, figuring that what I received was a one-off dud. It happens. You can't blame all the pens on one bad one. But considering the angry, accusatory, and insulting email I got from the owner after he saw my video, I've decided that I'm too old to get this upset over a $50 Indian fountain pen. I doubt I'd even try another one, even if it was given to me as a gift. Many of you have had excellent experiences with Fountain Pen Revolution pens, and good for you. Enjoy them. I'm sure there are good ones out there. I'd rather sit in the dark with a pencil in my eye. Thanks, anyway. And let's not leave 2020 with a bad feeling on this down note. Wait a tick. Wait a tick. 
Why not? 2020 sucked and it's still sucking big time. Let's look forward to the new year and to some wonderful pen adventures to come. I have some very interesting things coming in the new year, including this new Leonardo Momento Zero Grande in dark Hawaii. To a very elegant looking and my first Hongdian fountain pen. There are two new models of Jinhao coming, a Jinhao 85 and a Jinhao 9056, and a new model from Moonman, the Moonman M1000, or should I call it a Moonblock. In addition, in just a few days, I will be reaching 3,000 subscribers. Thanks to all of you who have subscribed and commented. I only do these videos because of the fun. I just told a viewer today that when I started this a couple of years ago, I thought there could be nothing more boring than a 20 minute YouTube video about a bloody pen. It's dull, dull, dull. My God, it's dull. It's so deadly dull and tedious and stuffy and boring and desperately dull. The fun is always much more important than the pens. And those of you that have watched me will know that when I reach a milestone in subscribers, it's time for a giveaway. And so for my 3000 subs video, I will be giving away this Jinhao 997, which I think is one of the best pen bargains for the dollar in 2020. I bought a bunch of them as stocking stuffers for Christmas, and one of them is going to one of you. So stay tuned, stay healthy, and please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell and get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching, and that's all she wrote. I made this.